there any other questions? I want to know what you're going to, how you're going to fund the new pool. Uh, anybody got? Oh, I'll hit that one. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll tell you what. This this is my thoughts, and I've had this thought for three years since I found out that our pool was actually 30 years old. It went by in a hurry. I remember it uh, in high school and thought it was a really nice new pool, and, and I doesn't seem like it's been 30 years. But it, it the problem we have with our pool is it's too small. Number one. It can accommodate all the needs of the community and, and the county. It's a county pool. Salina has their pool. We have the indoor pool. And it truly is a county pool. It's used by the county citizens. And it's used by the traveling public. Uh, so to fund a facility, in my vision of what we need, is something on the lines of a, a three-pool indoor outdoor facility. And, and they're expensive. I've, I've looked at Cedar City's Aquatic Center. I've looked at Canvas's Aquatic Center um, with their indoor tracks and their meeting facilities built into them. Uh, 14, 18 million dollars is probably conservative for eight years down the road. So the only way to fund that is through a bond. Uh, we have a par tax that we have right now that, that supports our recreation department. Um, we have a golf course bond. It's a recreation bond that was carried over from the original swimming pool bond. Uh, those funds will be, that debt will be met here shortly. Those could be rebonded, but but in my mind, it's going to have to be a county effort. Um, Camas's pool is funded by their school district and by their county, and and I see that as Richfield's. It it needs to be a Richfield project, a county project, and a school project. Uh, the school has a share agreement with Richfield's facilities. We use their facilities; they use ours. So I think it benefits the county to have a, a, a destination type aquatic center. So to fund it, in my mind, it's going to have to go to a bond. And we have to build value in the pool that we have right now. Uh, and I think it lacks in value to a lot of citizens. So I'd like to see that change now, so in four years or five years or six years, when we get close to a, a process that we have to bond, that it's got value to the citizens. So that, that, that would be my vision of how it would be funded. <laughs> I, I got a, just a comment on the pool, and I know that's been a really a hot topic lately. Uh, several, well, it's not been several years ago, it's been forever ago. I didn't have gray hair and it was long. And, and anyway, they built it, they remodeled the pool, and uh, they, they voted in a bond to redo the pool. The bond got put into a recreation tax through truth of taxation and the process, and they built the, the new golf course. Um, I think those are coming off in four or five years. I don't know the exact amount, but there's a substantial amount of money there that could go back to the pool. Secondly, our pool currently goes, is it $200,000? It's about $160,000 in the, in the red every year. Uh, I think that between probably updating the facility will save money. We did do a bunch of work up there two or three years ago. We put a boiler, lighting. We've tried to keep the pool going. It's expensive. But I think as Mike said, if you get a facility that can be used by all, then that would help generate more income, more use. And there's money, there's money that's coming available. The par tax money could be used. The bond off of the, the uh, golf course could be used. Obviously, there'd have to be some additional monies put into that. I think it's something that needs to be looked at. I know there's been questions about the location. Um, Kathy, I don't see you out there. I know her and I have talked a little bit about it. Moving it on to this side of town. Getting some stuff on this side of town. We have the... The spring there, which is a warmer water, which is less expensive to heat. There's there's some advantages to keeping it there. You know, there's a lot to look at. We did put a feasibility study in. They're in the process of doing a feasibility study. And the best part about that is it's going to get out to the public. And you all can decide how we want to want to tackle this. But I, I personally think there's funding there that we can do it as a city. Mike's ideas are good. 
uh, I guess my negative side, I just, I, I see if the county gets involved, then Salina's going to want their pool, and Monroe's going to want their pool, and rightfully so. But that's, that's my thought. I think it's very possible. I think it's something that we need to look at. So. Well, as Brian just alluded to, the uh, Parks and Rec Department's in the process of doing a uh, study in Ridgefield now to find out where the citizens, what, what the citizens feel about the Rec Department and its future. And the pool will be a, a big part of that discussion. Um, years ago, I had the opportunity, we have the PAR tax here in Richfield, and in, in Salt Lake County, they have what's called the ZAP tax, Zoo Arts and Parks. And I directed that program for a number of years, and, uh, uh, and while I was there, uh, we, with the recreation portion of that money, uh, we bonded against all 10 years of, of those funds and came up with $12, $13 million. And then we went to the the uh, cities in the county and said, if you'd like some sort of a recreation facility, uh, then uh, we'll match uh, funds with a grant. And um, uh, 12, 14 cities came in with, with proposals and we funded just about all of them. Um, and since that time, a number of them have closed because while we were prepared to help build that facility, there were no funds available from the county to help operate and maintain it. And um, as we do feasibility studies for a new pool, I think we need to keep that in mind. Um, you know, we could get CIB money, uh, bond money, some of these other things that are going to be paid for over the next few years that we could throw out a new recreation facility or pool. But I think we need to know up front what the operation and maintenance on that, on that building will be. Uh, because I'd hate to get three or four years into it and realize that we just can't afford to keep it open. So, it's all the Louise, the short answer to your question is we're going to have to borrow the money. Okay. What am I going to do if I'm the mayor? I'm not going to do anything because I don't have a, I don't have a legislative vote as to what happens with the money in Richfield City. That's up to the city council. What we need to be careful of is finding ourselves in the scenario that Tooele County is in right now. They have an $18 million recreational facility that they built several years ago that's sitting with the gates chained closed because the county couldn't afford to, to couldn't afford to operate it borrowed from their internal funds until they borrowed six million dollars that they now can't afford to pay themselves back. And so their $18 million rec facility is sitting with chains on the gates, deteriorating and not being used because it wasn't planned for properly and they didn't have to take it far enough. But the, the short answer to your question is the money's going to have to be borrowed from somewhere. First, I think we need to figure out how much money we need to borrow and what kind of facility we want to have before we start worrying about where the money's going to come from. And uh, Mike, I'd like to be there when you try to convince the county people in Schlein and Monroe to go in on a pool in Richfield. That'd be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think that they would consider that a lot of the families drive up to Mount right now. Mm -hmm. they I just, I've lived here all my life and I know how those things go. If we're going to have a pool, it's going to have to be us. And I'm all for it, but we better not be looking outside of our town very far. Well, my uh, twist on this is just a little bit different, and that is the fact that uh, as I've been walking around door to door talking to people, and I've covered a lot of the town, I have sore feet. Okay? And as I've talked to people, and I've opened up the communication and dialogue with people, and, um, you know, not to be a devil's advocate or anything. The discussion about the pool, you know, 10, 15 people talk about the pool, and some do, some don't. So as a new council member, money-wise, that would be secondary to me. It would be, where is the, is there an interest? I mean, we all want, we all want things for our children, you know, pools, parks. Um, but if there isn't a great need, and then end up like Dr. Barnett says, in the mess that Tooele's in, did we really do ourselves justice? So again, community input is vital in this type of a decision. Because the five people could sit up there, the five of us, and make that decision, but was that in the best interest of everybody? I mean, as Chris and I, are we going to go to the pool every Wednesday and, and swim? I mean, are we going to go to functions? I mean, it's just individually, every one of you has to collectively decide, put your, maybe put your own 
feelings aside for a second, think would everybody or the majority participate in it before we make that big of a purchase? That's what I would look at. Tied up. And yes, we have possibilities of borrowing money, but I think we need to look at the long term. If planning goes into effect now, then down the road we'll be able to do it. I don't think it's a project that we're going to be able to do in the near future. I think it's something that would have to be planned for. Because I think a lot of our money, or most of our money, is already promised out. And I think we have to be responsible enough to be able to pay our bills and stay in line with what our budget is. And take those projects that we want and be able to plan for the future. But I realistically, I can't see a way for Richfield City to do that in the next near future.